So in a previous video, I spoke about the listen bus and why specifically I use the listen bus in every single session, whether that's a tracking session, a mixing session, or a production session. I also mentioned that I have a very specific way that I have things set up. And I get a lot of questions about this when I'm doing either live streams or if I'm doing one-on-one -on -one consults, people say, what do you got going on with your listen bus? What are all these plugins? And I also mentioned in the, in the previous video that I was just talking about, the aforementioned why I use the listen bus video, which I'll make sure I link to somewhere, wherever it is, uh, that I would kind of explain my setup and the chain that I've created because I've got two different effects chains. Okay, so first of all, let me close up my fader port for a moment and let me just bring that in. Um, anytime that I create a preset, this is just kind of like a side note, but I think it's really useful information. Anytime that I create a preset, if I really want to have control and I want to know what it is and why I'm creating that preset, a lot of the times I will actually, if you double click any one of these plugin tabs and you go right over here, you can rename things. So for example, if I brought like a stock Pro EQ, if I just selected this and I brought up a Pro EQ, it's just called Pro EQ. But if I wanted to name it something very specific, I could say like Master EQ or something like that, if I wanted to. And then if I name this tab, now the actual tab would say master EQ. Sometimes I find it easier to read the actual tabs rather than the actual presets, or sometimes I will name the actual preset and the tab of the plugin the same thing. So that's not directly related to what we're talking about. That's just a little tip. It's something I find useful. For example, these, this is a, an instance of pipeline. Rather than having 10 instances of pipeline that, that all say pipeline XT, I would rather know exactly what it is. So when I created my, my, my WA bus compressor preset for pipeline, I just renamed the tab. Okay. Now, once you have a signal chain, as we know in studio one, and you wanted to store that, you can store a whole entire signal chain by going store effects chain. So you can give something a very specific name. So when it comes to the listen bus, I basically have two different areas that I've used in, and I've broken this up between the pre inserts and the post inserts. Now there's no rhyme or reason of why I have specific plugins in the post inserts versus the pre inserts, other than I wanted to have some visual separation. What do I mean by that? Okay, so on my listen bus, the way that I'm using the listen bus is basically the main outs are being passed to the listen bus, which is set to a different output. I have a controller and I can dial in any one of these outputs that I wanna to listen to. So if I wanna to listen to just the main outs, I'm dialing in the main outs, but the listen bus, I can click another button and that allows me to listen to output one and two. You don't have to do this. You can have the listen bus set to the main outs and it will just kind of apply the processing, but it won't be affected when you render it. It will only be for your monitoring. Now, the way that I like to use it is the top section here. They both come up as like activated. I will deactivate the post section. Now, the top section, this is for my headphones and this is specifically for my headphones when I'm in the engineering chair or whether I'm mixing or producing or tracking. So I have two instances of sound ID reference and each one of them is for a very specific set of headphones. I've renamed the tabs so that I know what's what. This is for my closed back, which is the Oppo PM3. It's got a custom curve uh, in terms of a little bit of boost top and bottom, and then it has whatever the correction adjustment from Sonarworks is. And then if I wanted to switch to the closed backs, or rather the open backs, then I can hop over and I can listen to my Olo S4Xs. Also somewhat recently, I have purchased the Audio-Technica, what are they? ATH R70X. These are really incredible headphones. They do require a separate amp though. They need a ton of um, a ton of gain to get a clean signal. So it might be pushing it if you're just running it off a small interface. But I really, really like those. So in the open backs, it's between those two pair. And then for closed backs, I'm only using the Oppo PM3s. So this allows me to basically choose which ones I want to listen to. And then it's just a simple matter of if I'm listening to the closed backs, I just deactivate the the, the Olo S4X. And if I want to switch to open backs momentarily, because closed backs can be kind of congested, then I'll just deactivate the closed backs and listen to the open backs. Now, I also have two plugins, which is a Pro-Q3 and, an, uh, and uh, two instances of Pro-Q3 with, with the same curve that I basically tried to make using the match EQ function and analyzing pink noise and applying Sonarworks and kind of generating the difference. 
There was a build of Studio One and Sonar Works a while back that had a high CPU usage. And if I was in a full production session where things weren't rendered and I was trying to track low latency vocals, I wanted to have the ability to have something that, that was using the most minimal amount of CPU. So just zero latency, like zero CPU hit. I don't really use this anymore. Um, I can use real-time instances of, of sound ID reference running in sessions without any issues, but this is still there from my previous tab because like I said, at the end of the day, I just basically store a full effects chain. Now what I've named this is, I've just named this pre-inserts over here, and then I know exactly where it is. It's a whole entire effects chain and this is what it has, and I've been using this for a long time now. I can't even remember, maybe over a year, maybe two years or something like that. Now this is all about headphones. And for the most part, I would just deactivate these two completely. And then, like I said, I'll just power up whichever I want. And then I will either power this on or power this off, depending on whether I'm working on headphones or whether I'm working on my monitors. Now I'm gonna switch over to the post section. And here we have three plugins. We'll bring them up here. So we have an instance of the iLouds plus sub which is Sonarworks, which is a room correction calibration curve that I've done for the specific room. And then if I go over to the next tab, it's a different set of speakers, which is my 8XTs, Iris E8XTs, plus the same sub, which is an Atom Sub 8. And then the last tab is a mid-range plugin that's in bypass. Now I've done a video on a mid-range mix check and I use this on every single mix. So this made itself into this particular post section of this effects chain. And again, this was quite simply stored as post inserts. Okay. Now in terms of how I use it and why I set things up this way, if you select the listen bus and let's open up the macro controls over here, Take a look at this. We have mid-range, we have PM3 bypass, S4X bypass, and we have bypass. Okay. I have basically mapped these macro controls out and I can pull out my fader port 16. I can click the macro button and now I have access to all these buttons. So let's start off with the, with, with the bypass. If we do this over here, this is a way that I've basically linked the bypass of both the iLouds plus sub and the 8XTs plus sub, I've linked them to the same button in the in terms of the macro controls, but one of them is inverted. What that means is that it's easier to visually see when we close the plugin over here. But what that means is if you take a look at these at any given point in time, it's either the iLouds will be active and the 8XTs plus sub will be bypassed or vice versa. So, but I'm doing this just by clicking the macro controls. And the reason that I wanted to do this is quite simply because I wanted a way to be able to toggle back and forth between both sets of speakers. And all I'm doing is I'm using one hand on the fader port. And then on this side, all I have to do is switch between alt one and mains. So if I want to listen to my alt ones, which is the iLouds, I can do this. And then, so I'm hitting the button at the exact same time. And while I'm toggling the different instances of Sonarworks, I'm also toggling on my monitor controller between the iLouds plus the sub and the 8XTs plus the sub. Now, I like this to be connected very much to the macro controls because like I say, it's a two, it's a two step process and it's very easy for me to toggle this back and forth. And I usually always mix with my fader port 16. Now I also have another mapping over here, which is mid range. And this one specifically controls the bypass state of this mid range plugin. So I'm gonna pin this and then let's open this again over here and we'll go back to our macro controls. And let me just make the attention here. So what this is basically, and I've done a video on this and how important this is to me and how much of a change this made in terms of my mixing. It's the same thing again. I make sure that my listen bus is selected. I open up the macro and then at any given point of time uh, from the fader port, I'm activating and deactivating my actual, um, my, my mid-range mix check. So let me find something over here. And then what I'll do is in the actual playback of this video, I'll make sure that we're listening to the listen bus. So what that means is that I'm gonna switch over temporarily so I can hear it, but you're gonna hear it in the edit. So if I play this.
I find that to be incredibly useful and it's a mixing thing that I always use. So therefore that is part of my setup. Now I will use the mid range trick sometimes with headphones, sometimes, but most of the time that I use the mid range trick, I'm using it with pretty much the iLouds and the sub or something like that. So I included it in this group. Now, in terms of setting up a session, I'll show you really quickly how this goes. I'm going to remove all from here and let's remove all from here and we will remove all from here. Notice that when I removed everything, if we go to our macro controls, we no longer have any macro controls available. What I found out through some through the process of basically trial and error is that if I wanted to have macro controls that were assigned to effects chains, that if I wanted to use the pre and the post, that if I dragged in the post first, let me just show you. I'm going to drag in the, uh, let's drag in the post inserts, which is my effects chain for the post. We'll do that. And you'll see that those three plugins were loaded. If we go to the macro controls, you can see that those, the mid range, which is for our EQ, and also the bypass, which toggles between the different uh, sound ID reference for my speakers A and speakers B, they all work exactly as they're expected. Now, if I drag in the pre inserts, I may have to close this for a moment and reopen it. Oh, it looked like it was okay. Let's go back to this tab again. We have, again, the bypass, which works as expected. Uh, the mid-range bypass. This is something that I'm not really using anymore. Let me activate this for a moment. What I had was basically, I had mapped this out so that if uh, sound ID reference was using too much power, I could deactivate these two plugins. And then this was just basically bypassing or unbypassing um, if I wanted to listen to either the Pro EQ, uh, Pro Q3 curve for my close backs or my open backs. I don't really use this anymore, to be honest with you. So I just found out though, that when you drag them in, in the opposite order with doing post first and then pre, that everything works, that it recalls all of these in terms of the macro controls. But really quickly, I'll do this again, but I'll do this the opposite way. So again, we'll go remove all and remove all. And if we open up our macro controls, everything is blank, which is kind of what we would expect. But now I'll do it in kind of the order that you would expect. So I'll do the pre-inserts first. And now I'll do the post-inserts. And keep in mind, they were all mapped out to something. And when I go here, unless it's changed, yeah. So this doesn't map out the exact same way as, as what I used to. Because the other thing is I have eight different macro controls over here in terms of these different buttons. And when you push the macro button, I like having space between the macro button one and macro button eight. There's eight faders in between that. So I can, I kind of know that one on the left is doing one thing and one on the right is doing something. So I just, it's kind of like muscle memory thing. So that's the only reason that I do it in the opposite order. Now, also to help myself remember, anytime that I start a new session, let's say that I open up a session and somebody sends me a mixing session and I open a com completely blank session, I drag in a bunch of regions or I drag in a bunch of stems. Anytime that I open a session, it automatically has my main outs and my listen bus. So the minute that I get started, the very first thing I do is I drag in my main outs chain, which is my VU meter, a VU MT meter, and then it has some references that I like that I just, if I need to kind of calibrate my ears mid, mid production, mid tracking or whatever. Um, for example, let's say I'm dialing in the high end on a vocal and I'm like, oh, that sounds great. I can very quickly open up this particular plugin and say like, okay, it sounds great, but what is the vocal on, on this particular song? What does that sound like? And then I'll play it really quickly. And I know that's as bright as possible, but it still sounds smooth. If I'm brighter than that, I have a problem. If I'm way darker than that, unless it works for the so song, I may have a problem. So this is just like a reference thing. And then the next step again would be post inserts. I'm going to drag that in. And then the last step would be pre inserts. I'm going to drag this in. So I put things in the name. I name the actual effects chain in a way that it will numerically display in the studio one browser in a way that it's easier for my brain to work. Now that is how I use the listen bus or how I set up my plugin chains and the reason why it's a very customized case. And it has to do with the, with the way that I work and the way that I use close backs. I use open backs. I tend to use the same pairs. 
I have two Sonarworks calibrations for the main sets of speakers that I use in this particular room, and then I also have my mid-range mix check. All of these videos that I've talked about, I'll make sure that they're available either in the description up above or down below or in links up above timestamp. But anyways, I hope you found this useful and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.